All right, without further ado, using options for consistent returns, a Theotrade presentation, quick risk disclosure. We are not financial advisors or a broker dealer. And one of the reasons I throw the risk disclosure up there and specifically read that is I spent the first 15 years really of my career uh, trading both professionally in Chicago and then uh, at a young age, I you know, went to a startup firm called Thinkorswim. I was in the brokerage industry, uh, eventually, which became uh, TD Ameritrade. So it's one of the reasons I throw that up there. I'm no longer a, uh, a broker dealer. Copyright disclaimer. This is ours. This is not yours. You must have written express consent. However, we will make available a replay to you. The other important thing on here, an email address. You ever need to get a hold of us? Ever? Support at Theotrade.com. All right, this is a little bit about me. Again, my name is Don Kaufman, co-founder here of Theotrade. I uh, started trading in Chicago in the late 1990s, only a few weeks out of college. I was invited to, uh, to trade in Chicago. I uh, spent about uh, two years there trading, was uh, promoted early on to a risk management type position. And uh, only about 18 months after that, I was invited to, a, again, a startup firm called Thinkorswim, where I kind of uh, spent time and I ran the education end of Thinkorswim, which progressed in one of the largest broker dealers out there. We, uh, you know, we were even at, uh, at a point in time prior to the acquisition, we were a unicorn firm, if you don't know what that is, it's a firm worth over a billion dollars as a startup. So pretty exciting as you know a uh, kind of young entrepreneur and trader to be a portion of that eventually we were acquired by t you know acquired by td ameritrade where i went on to run the education for their seven million clients um i've got you know 17 years of thinkorswim platform experience although that's not really going to come into the uh, equation so much today all right so i start with this i've done the, the little cnbc tour trading is not about being right or wrong, which I'm actually gonna discuss here momentarily. But when you go up against Mr. Wonderful, well, I was right on this one. He was most definitely wrong. With that, a little bit about Theotrade. So what is a Theotrade? You know, you, you come here, what is a Theotrade? And uh, we specialize in education for stocks, options, and futures. We're founded by professional traders and trading educators. Everybody in the crew here, everybody in the crew has a minimum of 15 years experience, uh, a few with a few decades. We've actually got uh, one trader I'll mention here. He's got uh, four decades over there. And what we're designed to do first and foremost here at Theotrade is to help you mitigate risks in the market. While again, learning that skill set can last a lifetime. Now, more importantly than just, you know, what is a Theotrade? Who is Theotrade? And I want you guys to understand that, you know, Theotrade is, it's not just, you know, myself or, you know, this is not a, uh, a one trick pony over here. We have a number, again, a number of highly regarded and key instructors here. Uh, the first being Doc Severson, Stocks, Options and Technicals, Jeff Bierman. Jeff actually worked side by side with me for over seven years at both Thinkorswim TD Ameritrade. Many of you guys, if you are ever used like the Thinkorswim charts, Jeff worked on those extensively. A lot of the studies and so forth that you guys see on there. Anyway, Jeff also held a pretty highly coveted position. He was the chief market technician for TD Ameritrade, 7 million clients. Uh, next on the list, we have Steve Slim Miller, 42 year uh, veteran stock options futures trader. He originally started uh, when the Chicago Board Options Exchange started. Last but definitely not least, Tony Rago, NASDAQ Futures, an intraday strategist. So it's a little bit about who Theotrade is. Again, right now we have five full-time instructors here. Now, let's get to it. What are you going to learn tonight? What are you going to learn in this presentation? Because we take, you know, time out of our schedules over here. You know, the proof's in the pudding. How to position your portfolio with the right trade logic and principles of building a trade. It's something I'm actually going to start with. How to replace stock with defined risk option strategies. Now, I said it right there. I said the O word, okay? I'm going to show you how to use options, okay, to both control risk and have a 
excellent risk reward. So new ways of looking at and kind of making peace with risk, which is a big portion of tonight's presentation, how to make friends with direction, okay? Expose any directional bias and learn one thing that direction eventually bows to. So we're also gonna talk about how to use specific probabilities to better all of your trading. Even if you're not, I wanna make something clear. You know, if you trade stocks, you might trade options, you know, futures contracts. What I'm gonna talk about tonight transcends markets, okay? I mean, you trade anything. If you can buy it and sell it, you can use what I'm gonna talk about tonight. So again, how to use specific probabilities to better your trading. We're also gonna talk about a very basic recipe for a strategy we call the in-out spread that can help you trade safer, build your confidence. So whether you're a beginner tonight or you're an experienced trader, anyone can do this as long as you can follow a recipe. It's, you know, it's baking a cake out there. Now, before I go any further, I'm also, I'm going to challenge you a little bit because one thing that, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I've done a lot of presentations over almost a 20 year career. And more often, you know, I get a lot of people that hop on here and they do, they just want instant coffee and instant tea. I mean, I literally put that in the slide. This is not instant coffee or instant tea. You know, this is a skill set based on statistical data. And this is not going to be a chart pattern or trade setup. I mean, come on. Everybody saw the market was going to explode higher today or lower tomorrow. You can't see. You're blind right now. Okay? Today, you know, and again, there's there's been a number of experiences, but I'm relating to today because some wild things happened in markets today. Markets were exploding to the upside until a missile was shot, and then they backed off, and then they exploded to the upside. And again, this you're blind out there. You want to learn this business? You got to be willing to put forth the effort. All right. Tonight we're going to talk about and discuss involves trade logic. It involves strategy and it involves probabilities in trading. Okay. And I, I let everybody know right up front, like, Hey, are you, are you game? And by the way, these are not rhetorical questions. You guys can jump in here anytime. Even if you're watching this in a recording, I don't care. Yell at the computer screen over here. That's fine. I read the chat, you know, while I'm on here, this is a slide that I've used for many years because this is what's important, okay, regarding markets, risk and success. How you handle your risk is directly correlated to your success in the markets. Too much risk? Oh, yeah, you're going to panic. You're going to close positions continuously at the worst possible time. But at least you're consistent with your panic. And yes, it's a Mac vomiting up the position over here. So it's, um, <laughs> it's something that... Uh, I just love that. By the way, I love the Mac. The It had to be a Mac over there. So this, I always start a presentation that, yes, we're going to talk about profitability, but we've got to focus a little bit about risk because risk is directly correlated to success. And if you can't handle, okay, if you can't handle the heat, this is where you're going to end up. And I hope that that makes a degree of sense. When I say you can't handle the heat, you know, you can't handle the position, this is where you end up is, you know, getting rid of the position. So what I've learned, uh, again, 15 years in the brokerage industry, and I don't mind telling you, I've looked at hundreds of thousands of accounts. You're like, that's impossible. How could anybody look at that? We used to study accounts, right? We had algorithms that would study accounts. I've seen everything, okay? You name it. I could tell you, you know, who makes money in options, who doesn't? What, what do they do in stocks? You know, when people buy, when they sell, when they panic, I've seen what works and what doesn't. You know, the buck stops here. When somebody spent 15 years in the brokerage industry, 20 years trading themselves, they know what works. Problem is, what doesn't work gets repeated over and over again. And today, we're going to discuss, and that's, that's why I put a presentation like this together, because today we're going to discuss what has worked consistently. All right, this has got to be about consistency. And by the way, yes, all of your brokerage firms study what works and what doesn't. Theory, trade, logic. By the way, people always ask, what does Theo trade mean? That's what it means. It means theory, trade, logic. That's literally what it means. It's 
Theo theory, okay, trade, and yeah, I threw logic in there, but hey, it's theory, trade, logic. Probabilities are the law on the markets. You're not going to overcome them. Like one, but you got to understand when I say probabilities are the law on the markets, one trade, good or bad, does not define you as a trader. Remember that. And when I say remember that in one good trade, like you can't have one position that knocks you out of this business. Okay. Trading goes beyond one trader idea. It's about thousands of occurrences and having the right logic over time. You know, think about that for a second. You want to be right. You want to be lucky. I mean, what, what do you want to do over here? If you trade enough, forget about being right. Forget about being lucky. Okay. You're going to have to do something that's going to stand the test of time. Remember, this is a lifelong skill you're learning. Okay. No one's learned it overnight. So go a little easy on yourself because people struggle a little bit. Now, principles of building a trade. What we'll start with here tonight, trade logic, capital allocation, directional bias. This is the principles of taking any trade. Now, when I say principles, okay, trade logic, Ooh, what does that even mean? Capital allocation. You can kind of figure that one out. It's how much capital you're going to allocate. Last but not least, the directional bias. Okay? Directional bias. What does directional bias mean to you? Please chat in any time over here when I say directional bias, because that's what we're about to step into. Trade logic, capital allocation, directional bias. This is how you approach anything you're going to do in the marketplace. Now, let's go to trade logic. When you approach the markets, you have to place strategy and trade logic first. Now, the vast majority of people involved in the markets, they're infatuated with market direction, attempting to predict the next move a stock is going to make. But the right strategy coupled with established entry and exit criteria, okay? If you have the right strategy coupled with established entry and exit criteria, if no idea, if you have no idea what entry and exit criteria, it's a recipe, okay? You don't need to be right in picking a direction in a stock or the markets. Now, the reason I throw this up here about trade logic, okay, I want you to think, okay, and be, be honest with yourself. Do you think a big trading firm, big trading firm out there, right? There's a firm in Chicago. They have $27 billion, okay? Do you think that they sit around desks and they go, what do you think the market is going to do? I don't know. What do you think the market is going to do? Do you think we're going to go up today? I mean, legitimately, think about it. There's, you know, there's only like one or two people answering in here. Hey, everybody, okay? Do you think that's legitimately what goes on in a marketplace with billions of dollars at risk? I don't know. I'm thinking about getting short today. People, come on. They have trade logic. They have strategy. They have something that they know is going to work and stand the test of time. They'll have down days, okay? But the logic and the strategy has to be first. Number two, capital allocation. Think about it. Capital allocation is more important than being right directionally, okay? It says capital allocation takes, pre takes precedence over being right, okay? How and where you allocate capital has to be a strong consideration, okay, as a viable portion of your trading methodology. Now, I'm just going to spend a second on this. If you allocate a ton of money and you're wrong, you're dead, dead, okay, because the market's going to force you out. And that's one of the most important things, okay? Too big, you die. And you end up, you know, well, like the computer showed you in the beginning over there, you know, throwing up the position. Directional bias. Listen, we're not anti-chartites, okay? We're not anti-charts. We just, we recognize where you think a stock might go doesn't always mean the markets are going to agree with your sentiments. <laughs> you know, you're like, ooh, Google go up, Google go up, Google go up. Yeah, except today, everything went up except Google, okay? Oh, Amazon has been going up every day except today, all right? Being right directionally, it can't define us as investors or traders for we may not be right often enough. Remember that. One of the war cries that we use here at Theotrade, duration over direction. How and where you allocate capital can define not only losses, but it can be the defining factor in your overall success or failure in the markets. 
I wanted to bring capital allocation up again because our war cry, again, duration over direction. You need to be capable of sustaining trades long enough to be profitable. Okay? Think about that for a second. You need to be capable. How many people, and I'm, I'm going to ask this question right now, and we're going to ask it again later, but how many of you have ever had to get out of a position because you just couldn't take it? You're like, I can't take it. Now, this is this is asking for people that have traded a little bit, you know? And by the way, you typically get out of position the worst possible time. Like, you know, you're like, yes, I was the all-time low. I sold at the lowest price that Facebook has ever been to at $17 and change. That was me, okay? Everybody goes through that. You got to get over duration over direction. You want to be right? Or you want to be happy. <laughs> I had to throw this in there because I have not applied this to my marriage, but the logic seems to work beautifully in trading. I'm always going to take that stance. You do not have to be right to make money. And when I talk about right and wrong, oh, well, I'm going to get into that. You know, you got to ask yourself in trading, like, you know, everything you, everything you're bombarded with, everything you're bombarded with. You know, you turn on CNBC and there's a guy throwing a chair going, bye, bye, bye. And it's just, it's overwhelming, okay? Everything that everybody ever does is like, what do you think's gonna happen? What do you think's gonna happen? Well, maybe we should step away from that because a trading firm with $27 billion tells you, okay, that they don't care. They just don't care because that's, that's not their strategy. Why, you ask? Experience in watching order flow for decades has taught us invaluable lessons. And you think about this. You ever been stopped out of a trade or bailed out of a position only to see the markets turn around shortly thereafter? I mean, and I present that. And again, I said I was going to present this multiple times over here because this is what happens to everybody. Literally, you're like, I can't take it. I got out of the position. I was the low tick. It was the worst day of my life until it happened the week after and that was the worst day of my life but then it happened like six months later and I wasn't very happy with myself core strategy and trade logic so you got to get over the hump here when I say over the hump today I want to introduce one real world strategy that you can start using tomorrow and a lot of it has to do first and foremost risk mitigation if you've never heard the word mitigation, it's like risk control. We got to put, you know, if you will, the brakes on how much you have at risk. Because if you panic, you're done. I want you to remember that. You panic, you're done. But first, risk versus reward. When we first learn about markets and trading, we're exposed to the ideas and ideals, if you will, of risk reward. And a lot of people talk about, I want to risk one to make two. I want to risk one to make two. It's a common strategic entrance to the marketplace. However, have you ever looked at the probability of success of this idea? I just, before I go any further, okay, how many of you here have ever thought about risk one to be able to make two, risk one to be able to make two? Because when I start getting into trade logic, this is what trade logic is, okay? It's understanding something as simple as, as just that. When I say risk one to make two, I mean, what I'm legitimately saying is we're going to go out, we're going to risk a buck to make two bucks, okay? And we're actually going to question the viability of this idea, all right? Well, a couple of people in here, yes, all right? The rest of you, we have a, we have a very shy group tonight. You know, we have like, you know, 700 of your friends on right now, but everybody's shy. Okay. So you hear this risk one to make two. Well, before we go any further, we got to debunk risk versus reward. What do I mean debunk it? Let's take a look at the following example. We're going to buy a stock at what? 30 bucks, 30 bucks, 30 bucks, 30 bucks. Follow along over here. Cause now we're actually going to get into the context of trading. When we start talking about trading. Okay. We move at a pretty good clip. Make sure that you guys understand this though, before we go any further, we're going to buy a stock at 30. We're going to set a stop order at 29. Okay. So if you go over here and you're to actually write this order up, you're buying 
at 30. Okay. Stop at 29. Target price up here. Okay. Target is 32. Okay. This is the prototypical risk one to be able to make too. I made it as simple and clean as possible. Okay. So you got a stock right at 30. Okay. You set the target at 32. What did you use to enter this? I don't know. Yeah. You, you know, some technicals over here. You had a MACD, you have Fibonacci, you got your Bollinger Band, stochastic. Ah, let's just throw an Elliott wave in there just for fun. It's a type four. I tell you. Anyway, you go in here, you got a bucket risk to be able to make two. I just wanted to lay out the groundwork before we go any further and apparently, you know, have a little fun with it. By the way, I like to draw on the screen too. My, my goal one day is to be the John, the John Madden of trading probabilities in your trading. So let's step back. Let's step back from what you think for a second. Okay. So <laughs> when I say step back from what you think, it's really hard for people to do this because they're all like, but, 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 but I have to think, I, I think it's going to go up. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think what is more likely. Okay. And you have to look at the marketplace when I say step back from what you think. So that's a distribution curve. Here's the $30 stock. Okay. In this distribution curve, stock can go to 31. Stock can go to 32. Stock can go to where? 29. Stock can go to what? 28. So we can go up to 32. Now, this is equal distributions. Assuming that you know nothing about direction because of the long haul. By the way, when's the long haul over? Is that when you got one foot in the grave or both feet in the grave? I've been asking that question for like 20 years because that's what every like portfolio manager says. You're in it for the long haul. I'm pretty sure that's when I'm dead. Anyway, if you look at an equal distribution, <clears throat> because that's what probabilities come into play, the probability of going to 31 is the same as going to 29. The probability of going to 32 is the same as going to 28. And if you looked at a marketplace over a long period of time, this really does play out this way, you know? Hey, so what's the chance of going to 32 versus what? 29. And you think about this, it's a lot easier to get from 30 to 29 than it is to get from 30 to 32. Okay, that's, that's the key point over here. And you can start to think about this and you're like, wait, so I have a better chance of what? What's the better chance? Better chance of hitting 29 or 32, okay? What's your probability? Better chance of hitting 29 or 32? Anybody, 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 okay? Clearly, if it's a, a normal volatility in market, even when stocks, like, because some people go, well, stocks only go up right now. Yeah, they don't. Even, you know, you want to look at a chart on anything, you know, even the Googles of the world, you know, the, the Facebooks of the world, they go down, they go up, they go down, they go up, uh, they go down, and sometimes they go down more, and sometimes they're bed, bath, and beyond, and might go to zero, but, or GE, right, that's, hey, here you go, that's GE right now, there's GE, what does it do? It doesn't do much. Anyway, in a normal volatility fluctuation, normal fluctuation, the probability of going to 29 is drastically higher than hitting 32. Options or probabilities. Now, time out. You may have never looked at or even traded in an options market. However, are you aware that options are based on probabilities? Options can help us in determining the viability and practicality of any given trading strategy. Now, this is where I'm going to say, and you're like, oh, well, okay, I want to get into this, but this is where I say, listen, you may not want to trade options. I totally get it. Okay. But just understanding that options are based, options are based on probabilities is huge because even if you're not going to trade an option, don't you think you should look at it? Well, let us look at what the probabilities are in the aforementioned risk one to make two trading setup and see if it's viable over the duration. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take you into the live market and I'm gonna show you something. And it's a calculation that you may or may not be familiar with, but let's just do it. Let's do it, okay? Here's an example and it's in Starbucks. By the way, the only reason I selected Starbucks, everybody like, ooh, Starbucks. Like nobody hasn't heard of Starbucks. That, that, and I didn't wanna start 
I didn't want to start with Amazon tonight, which is like a $1,200 behemoth that scares everybody, you know, to death. And Google, which is, you know, this $1,000 behemoth. Or uh, I'm sick of talking about Apple, so I, I pick Starbucks. Because clearly, I've had far too much Starbucks today. Anyway, I want you to see Starbucks is trading right at 56. By the way, I took this screenshot today. Okay, today. And I waited for Starbucks to get right around 56 bucks <laughs> because it was a nice even in round number. I literally sat there and I'm like, go to 56, go to 56. The closest I could get, it went to 56.08. I'm sorry, but it's 56. It's close enough. It's as good as I can do. So if we went out and I'm going to take you through the logic over here really quick. If we went out and we bought the stock, let's take you through this example. Let's say we bought the stock. So we buy, okay, at what? 56. Now, let's set a stop order exactly a dollar below. Okay? Stop! At what price? 55. And then our target is going to be up here. Target! Okay? Our target's going to be where? Well, plus 2. So we're going to make that one 58. Now, follow with me over here so we're all clear. What am I doing? I am risking here 1 to make effectively two. Now let's look at the probabilities behind that. The probabilities that we're looking at happen to be 38 days out. Now I selected 38 days. That was, that was the only input I gave it. I gave us a little bit of time, not too much time, but I basically said in a little bit over a month. What's the probability? And this is what we call probability of touching. Probability of touching. What is probability of touching? It's the probability that any time it's called an anytime probability. The probability anytime in the next 38 days, okay? Anytime in the next 38 days of touching, for instance, 55 or, or touching 58. And here we find the probability of touching 55 is about 69%. The probability of touching 58 is 45%. So time out, time out, time out. If you're following along over here, okay, you buy the stock at 56, what's the probability of getting stopped out? That's all I want to hear. What's the probability of getting stopped out? Anybody, 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 anybody? Probability of being stopped out. Well, the probability of being stopped out is the probability of touching 55. Now, people look at this and they go, is dem dare probabilities right? Well, okay, the probabilities in the market over time are efficient, meaning that they are very accurate. And this stuff has been studied, you know, for decades and decades. By the way, if these probabilities, for instance, are wrong, because everybody asks that question, if the probabilities are wrong, then the option market's wrong, and then the stock market's all wrong, okay? So if you think the probability, probability is derived directly from the option price. Basically, you have close to a 70% chance specifically a 69% chance of getting stopped out. Like, how does that grab you? If you enter this strategy, you got almost a 70% chance of getting stopped out. You're like, yeah, but I have a 45% chance of making some money, some good money. Yeah, but you're never going to find that out. You're never going to find that out because you're going to be stopped out and stopped out and stopped out and stopped out. And you're going to get bled out this way. I'm not saying this is the end all be all, but you're going to get bled out. And what bled out ultimately means is what? Little bit by little bit. It just takes a little bit of money, a little bit of money, a little bit of money, a little bit of money. Okay. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, but, but I made money and it lets you make money. I don't know. Once every three or four times and you lose a little bit and lose a little bit and you make money and it just strings you along. It's like literally, okay. As somebody just came in here and said, it's death by a thousand paper cuts. And if you tell me you haven't been through this, Okay, then you've just, you apparently have never used stop orders. This is one thing that drove me insane. Okay, 15 years at a brokerage firm, you see people doing this again and again and again and again and again. And they don't realize they're about to get bled out. Risk versus reward revealed. In the aforementioned Starbucks example, by the way, Starbucks is S B U X, S books. Okay, the probability of hitting. Okay. The stop price of 55 was 69%. The probability of hitting the target of 58 was about 45%. In the risk one to make two scenario, it's a, well, it's a setup for low probability disaster. You can make money, 
but you're going to get bled out. Hence, it's dollars down the toilet bowl over here. Now, what we got to talk about, all right, what we got to talk about over here. By the way, somebody also said, hey, you know, in the aforementioned example, this is just like a slot machine. It is. It's death by a thousand paper cuts or it's like a slot machine. You pay it, you pay it, you pay it. Once every, you know, couple of times it feeds you money back. You're like, oh, I like it. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Like You can't even believe people are out there. This is this is their logic. OK, and it's just it's a disaster. Positioning your portfolio. With the right trade logic, so let's kind of get down and dirty. How do you position yourself most effectively without exposing yourself to drastic risks like to me? Drastic risks is everything because I have also I'll say this on the side. I've watched people make money and make money and make money, and make money. This is a perfect scenario right now in the marketplace. OK, now, you know, I say right now, here we are in 2017 and late 2017, we've had an up market. Everybody's feeling good, they're feeling warm, they're feeling fuzzy. You just need one bad day, one bad day. Everybody exposes themselves to drastic risk. You got to cut that out. OK, what we got to get you interested in here is a trading strategy that number one overcomes okay, the high probability of being stopped out. You need a strategy. Okay. You need a strategy where you do not get stopped out. Number two, it's got to define your risk. When I say define risk, if you want $100 at risk, great. You can have a hundred bucks at risk. If you want a thousand dollars at risk, if you want $300 at risk, you need to be tailoring your risk provides a high probability of success. If you're not hitting singles and doubles there routinely, you're going to be destroyed, okay, mentally. Think about that for a second. High probability of success. Why that's so important? You got to be consistent because you, if you don't hit singles and doubles, you're going to get worn out so quickly. Limit capital exposure. That's overall capital exposure, not just defined risk. When I say limit capital exposure, right now, somebody listening to this, okay, somebody listening to this right now, okay, I will guarantee own shares of Apple. They own shares of Facebook. In fact, most of us do because it's in your 401k, it's in your IRA, it's in something, but they, they own all of this stuff. They own the physical shares. Why do you have to own the physical shares? You never need to buy or sell the stock. That's step number five over here. I mean, that's, that's what I look at. Okay. In a trading strategy, enter the in out spread in out spreads are designed, number one, to limit exposure and maximize potential, okay, with very minimal movement in the underlying. In out spreads are options trades. I said it again, the O word, you know, I think most people at this point are probably over that. They're like, all right, options, are, options are totally mainstream right now. When I first started trading in the late nineties, nobody, nobody really traded options. I mean, seriously, by about 2002, I remember going out in 2002, you know, I was still in my early 20s. By the way, I'm, I'm getting up there these years, so uh, I'm uh, in the 40s. I'm in the 40s now. Anyway, you know, options became a little bit more mainstream by 2002. And by like 2007, everybody's on it. But 2008, uh, they got scared of them again. But now it's become like one of the most mainstream things to trade. Okay. But fear not the options. As the option spreads are going to allow us to limit our risks without the use of stop orders. There's not going to be a stop order. I don't need no stinking stop. Okay. While providing considerable upside potential. So let's go through, let's give you a little bit of an example of an in out spread. Okay. I'll give a little bit of an example over here. So, uh, Oh, funny. Somebody was actually mentioning, uh, the OEX. Okay. Eric was mentioning the OEX. Eric, that's uh, that's that's where I, I first walked into the OEX back in 1998. Shortly thereafter, I was in the SPX, but uh, the official pit that I trained in, a gentleman by the name of uh, Steve, trained me in a pit called Yahoo. It's weird because Yahoo is not even really a company. It's like Verizon now. In out spreads explain. So let's go through here and let's just say we have a stock. And I love to give examples like this. You know, it's a stock. 
stock. Okay, we have a stock. Doesn't matter what stock it is, and the stock is trading right smack at a hundred bucks. Okay, so this stock right here is at a hundred bucks. Now, where can the stock go? Right, if it's at a hundred, if it's at a hundred, come on, there's a hundred. It can go up here to what? 101, 102, and so forth, and go down to 99. 98. All I want to do is give equal weighting to both sides of the equation. You guys with me? Okay. And this is the in out spread explained. But again, equal weighting. So the probability of going down, for example, see all the way down here, the probability of going down to 50 is similar to the probability of going up to 150. And there's a lot of stocks right now. By the way, there's a ton of stocks right now that are up huge, but there's also a ton of stocks right now here in 2017 that are down huge. And it's, it's literally, it's both sides of the equation right now. You know, you got GE right now, you got Bed Bath and Beyond. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you go, you got your, what? You got your Facebook, you got your Caterpillar. Okay. And then we have what? We had Starbucks. Starbucks was like somewhere in the middle because the thing never moves. And that's, that's reality of the market. You got stocks that go down, stocks that go up. Now, Let's go back to our original example here. Let's explain a little bit about this spread. So what a lot of people try to do in the marketplace is, so the stock is trading right at 100. They try to go out and they turn around and they buy, for example, a call option. They buy a call option. Now, for those of you that have no idea what an option is, you've never even seen an option, buy a call. What does that mean? You have the right to buy a stock at a specific price. Okay, and the specific price is known as the strike price. So if you wanted to buy a call, what call might you want to buy? You know, I'll tell you what, the stock is trading at 100. We could buy a 100 call. Now, a 100 call gives you the right to buy the stock at what? 100. By the way, if you buy a 100 call, what are you going to pay for it? Anybody, 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 anybody? Let's say we pay two bucks. You have a 100 call. What's the 100 call give you the right to do? Buy the stock at 100. If you buy the stock, Okay, well, you don't have to buy the stock. Why? Because you have the call. You have the upside of the stock without actually owning the stock. Okay, when people have a right to buy the stock, do they have to buy the stock? No, it's a right. It's not an obligation. So they buy a 100 call and they want the stock to go up. But here's one of the downsides. If you buy a 100 call, that 100 call is good for a period of time. How much time? In this case, let's say it's exactly one month. Ooh, we paid what? We paid $2 for one month of time. Okay. Now, well, you think about this. If the stock was at 100 and you bought a 100 call, where do you need the stock to go? Up. Why do you need to go up? Because you have the right to buy the stock at 100, but you paid two bucks for it. So really, you don't need the stock at 100. You need the stock at where? 102 just to do what? Break even. So now in this equation, you bought a 100 call, but then you need the stock up here at 102 or you don't even get your money back. So you're up against the clock. You're like, come on, big money, big money, big money. No whammies, no whammies. Stop. And what happens if the stock goes down? Because, you know, the stock could go down to 98. If the stock goes down to 98, you lose your two bucks. What happens if the stock goes to 99? You lose your two bucks. What if the stock goes right to 100? You lose you two bucks. What if the stock goes to 101? Ugh, you lose only a dollar. But if the stock goes to 102, eh, well, break even point. You need that stock up and up big. You're going to need that stock at like 104, 105, 106. And what somebody else just said is true. Plus transaction costs. I mean, it's crazy. That's what a lot of people do with options. Let's get rid of that chunk. Okay. What the in out spread is, what the in out spread is, okay. Here's the same stock, and the stock is trading at 100. We're gonna go out, okay? We're gonna buy a call. You ready? Here we go. We're gonna buy, and in this case, we're gonna buy a 99 call. Now that 99 call is gonna have a little bit more of a premium. The 99 call, let's say that it's gonna cost us $2 and 50 cents. So that thing is going to cost just $2 and 50 cents. So we buy, I'm going to put it down here, the 99 call, and it's going to cost just what? $2 and 50 cents. Now, simultaneously, 
<laughs> that means at the same time, we're going to turn around and we're going to sell, okay, a 101 call. And we're actually, when you sell something, and we're going to talk about selling here for a second, we're going to sell this, we're going to sell it for a buck fifty. Now let's put that down below here too. Let's sell the 101 call, and we're going to collect a dollar fifty. Now stop right there. When people initially look at this, they're like, wait a second, whoa, 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 whoa. I get the buying of the 99 call. By the way, the 99 call gives you the right to buy the stock at 99. You have the right to buy the stock at 99. The stock right now is trading at 100. The 99 call is worth at least a dollar right now because you have the right to buy the stock at 99. Everybody else in the world has to pay 100, okay? But you paid 250 for it, 250. And at the same time, you sold a 101 call. Now, time out. Somebody goes, excuse me, Don? How do you sell something? Because I don't ever remember buying it. You're selling something that you never, ever owned. You don't have to own it. You're actually selling a 101 call and you're selling it, okay, covered against the 99 call. You're selling yourself into an obligation. Here's the obligation. You have to give somebody the stock at 101 if they do what's called call upon you. That's why it's called a call. They can call the stock away from you and they go, I elect to take the stock at 101. You go, oh, that's cool because I have the right to buy it at 99. So let's say the stock went skyrocketing to 200. You're like, oh, well, you have the right to buy it at 99, but then you're going to have to give it to somebody else at 101. What's the most you can make? Now, it's a trick question. What's the most you can make? In a $2 wide spread, you can make $2. But what'd you actually pay for this spread up front? The whole spread is done, okay, for a $1, and this is what we term debit, okay? This is a debit. Yes, we're paying something up front. Now, some people go, you should only sell options. Yeah, we are selling an option against an option that we own. You could also sell this spread, but I don't want to get into that right now because you got to get the logic of this first. This, okay, without unequivocation, is the most important thing I'm telling you that you guys can learn in this business. And a lot of people, they kind of tune out because they're like, oh, this is kind of, a, it's kind of a lot on me right now to learn. I'm telling you, it's not that bad, right? You have the right to buy the stock at 99. Don't even worry about price. You have the right to buy the stock at 99. Somebody has the right to take stock from you at 101. The only way they're going to take stock from you at 101 is if the stock is well above 101 because nobody wants to take the stock from you at 101. Like if the stock went down here to a 10, you think somebody wants to buy it at 101 when it's trading at 10? No. The only way they want to buy it at 101 is if it goes up here. Like if it goes to 102, 103, 104. But it's okay because you're covered. You have the right to buy the stock at 99. Everybody else, what? Okay? Can take it from you at 101. You still make your two bucks. You make your two bucks, but you paid how much up front? Okay? You paid how much? A dollar. But let me get to the logic over here. Because let me get to the logic, because everybody gets lost in the, uh, they get lost to kind of in the minutia of the trade. What's the max risk? Max risk equals $1, okay? Reward equals $1. The max risk is a buck. The max reward is a buck. And you're like, whoa, 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 slow down. You're risking $1 to make $1. Oh, Don, that's that's ingenious. I should have thought of that. No, I don't want to be too sarcastic with this. You're risking a buck to be able to make a buck, but your probability of making the dollar, the reward side of it, is drastically higher than the risk side of it. Let me explain exactly why. During the life of the trade, you have defined risk. You cannot lose more than a dollar in the spread, okay? That's your max risk. But... What can happen during the life of the spread? Well, the stock right now is trading smack dab at 100. Let's say this thing has one month of time. In the next month, could the stock go down? Yes, the stock can go down. Now, here's the stock at 95. You're like, oh, man, we're at 95. Let me ask you a question. When the stock is at 95, do you panic? No. Why don't you panic? Do you get stopped out? No. Why would you get stopped out? I mean, stops are ridiculous. You only have a dollar of max risk. Forget it. Just leave it alone. Okay? You got to look at this. It's 95. You're like, oh, but still my heart. But you know what? That happened in the first week. Before you know it, stock is up here. 
Stock could be right at 101. And at 101, guess what? You make a buck. So you have to understand this from a probability perspective. The stock is going to oscillate up and down. You just need it to go up, okay, at some point in the next month, and you get out of it before it goes back down. And you can even set an order so you don't have to sit there and watch it. You can set what's called a GTC. It's a good till canceled order. One of the things I got to stress in this, okay, it's a probability-based trade. People look at this and they go, well, the... The most you can make is a dollar. The most you can lose is a dollar. How am I going to make money if I'm right half the time? And you pay commissions, okay? The reason you can make money on here is you don't get stopped out. You hold on to the trade. You hold on to the trade. The stock can go all the way down to 90, but still has the probability of getting back to 101, 102, 103. Why don't you think about something like Amazon? Amazon's been moving 17, 20, 30, even $40 recently in a day. All you needed to do is move a couple of bucks. Get out, get happy, enjoy it. Let's go into a real example. We okay? Deep breaths. Everybody okay over here? Hmm? Yes, maybe, sometimes, never, because we're going, all right? In out spreads, Starbucks example, okay? Let's continue with our Starbucks example. However, instead of using a stop order, we're gonna use an in out spread rather than the stock and the stop. Okay, you know, one of the uh, one of the things, there was a, a marquee trader that traded in the OEX pit and his uh, one of his famous sayings, he used to say, stop is a four letter word. I never forgot it. I never forgot it. Like literally a marquee kind of trader in there. You know, it's good. It's good. So rather than buying the stock at 56, Remember, like Starbucks was at 56, we set the stop at 55, yada, 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 we wanted it to go up. But rather than, you know, buying the stock at 56, we're going to use a spread to limit risks and to provide a high probability without the use of stops. Mm, Frappuccino. So you're trading a Frappuccino now, all right? Here we go. Starbucks, example. I laid this one out almost identically to the previous trade. So... Here is Starbucks. And by the way, I apologize for one, one little thing over here, okay, on this slide. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it right. I'm going to make it right because I had to wait all day for the stock price to move, okay? Here we go. Starbucks is trading where? 56. Now, we're going to use an in-out spread. Now, people always ask me, they're like, why do they even call it in-out spread? Why do they call it an in-out spread? Because... One of your options is what we call in the money. One of the options is out of the money, okay? We're gonna buy a 55 call. 55 call gives us the right to buy the stock at 55. By the way, this is a real example, which I will show you momentarily. You have the right to buy the stock at 55, but at the same time, we're gonna sell the 57 call. So we're buying a 55 call, selling a 57 call. Now, do it again. If it's a, what, $2 wide spread, what's the most you can make in a $2 wide spread? Okay, can make $2, but you had to pay a dollar up front. I just, I rounded the numbers to make it easy. It was $1.70. You had to buy the 55 call for $1.70 and you sold the 57 call for a 70 cent credit. Now, put it together over here, okay? You pay a buck 70, you collect 70 cents, but this is done as one transaction. It's called a spread and it's a, a $1 debit. It's a $1 debit. Now remember, what can Starbucks do, all right? And I, I, I want you to think about the next month in Starbucks, okay? I want you to think about the next month in Starbucks. So Starbucks over the next month can meander down. Let's say it meanders down to 54 bucks. Now this trade happens to be bullish, but have we ever been wrong? Hmm? Anybody, anybody? It's bullish. We've been wrong. Of course you've been wrong. So the stock goes from 56 down to 54. You're like, oh man, there goes my dollar. You're not stopped out. You got to think of yourself, you know, the stock's down at 54. Don't get out of the trade. Okay. Hold it. Hold, hold the line. Why? Because at that point, you've pretty much already lost the dollar. You know, you have to rationalize this as you're lying uh, dead at the bottom of the pool. At 54, you're dead. Your, your dollar's gone. The only thing that can happen to you in the next three or four weeks is good things, right? 
you know, the stock could continue lower, but if the stock continues lower, you're like, oh, I already lost a dollar. Yeah, well, the stock could also come right back up, and all it has to do, okay, is get above 57, and boom, we're golden. We're golden, get out of the trade, collect the dollar. That's why the probability, the probability of you making the dollar is much higher than the probability of losing a dollar because you have time on your side, and it's one of the key factors over here in the trade. Let's look at it for real. This is a screenshot, again, taken today. And you can see in the screenshot, stock is trading right around 56. We're gonna buy a 55 call, and we're gonna sell the 57 call against it, okay? The 55-57 spread, it's, again, it's a spread, it's done as a package, is done for a $1 debit, and that's our maximum risk in the trade. Now, one thing we haven't covered since we talked about it is the probabilities. Look, there's over a 72% chance of touching, 72% chance of touching the 57 level, okay? Anytime in the next 38 days. And, you know, in this case, I selected 38 days, but could you do these trades for shorter periods of time? Yes. You know, some of you are gonna be like, a swing trade. Why would you swing trade using stock? Uh, you, if you tie up $56 a share after seeing this, you are out of your mind. Think about that. After seeing something like a spread like this, people are going to go out and they're like, yeah, I'm going to buy, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to buy me some Facebook. Oh yeah, $200 a share. That sounds like a good plan. You're crazy. Okay. And yes, you can do this in pretty much liquid stocks, but this is the, you know, the real prices. It's a dollar debit. You want to go on? Do another one. Okay, here's another one. This one happens to be in City. Have you heard of it? It is a bank, okay? The reason I selected City, and I did this today, is because City was right at $73 when I took the shot. And the reason I did it right at 73 is because it makes the math easier. It just makes it easier to understand. In this case, the stock was trading right at 73. Now think about this for a second, okay? You know, we'll lay it out like we did a little bit earlier. And, you know, here's the stock. And the thing right now is at 73, and you're doing a what? A 72 to what? About 74 spread, okay? 72, 74 spread. In fact, let me change the color over here, make it even easier, you guys, to be able to see this, because this stuff is important, right? So you go out, you do this spread, it's the 72, 74 spread, okay? This one also costs about a buck, because you're buying an option for where? Just over two bucks selling an option, okay? This one you're paying about what? Uh, 215 for, this one you're selling for about a buck 15. I'm just rounding it right now. So you're paying 215, selling this one for a dollar 15, right? So you pay 215, collect a buck 15. What do you got? You got a dollar debit. Max risk, a dollar debit. What do you think City can do? City's been on a tear to the upside lately. It's another spread. Now, these two trades that I just did, okay? These are bullish. Starbucks trade, it's bullish. Look at the probability of touching, 72%. You want something even crazier? Look at the probability of touching here, 78%, almost 79% chance of touching the 74 level. Now we're gonna get to the stratosphere, you ready? Amazon, why? What, you think you can't do this in Amazon? And I'll tell you what I did in Amazon, just to throw like a little uh, you know, monkey wrench into the works over here. Amazon is trading just shy of $1,200. Now, a lot of people look at this and they go, I can't trade Amazon. Why? Because I, it's not cool to buy one share. <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah, I could buy three shares of Amazon with my account. You know, three shares of Amazon, you're like, oh, I'm all margined out. It's, it's all done. I mean, because listen, it's a big product. So you use spreads. But this spread that I did over here is with puts. I don't want to drive you crazy over here, but in this case, we're doing a 1200 1190 put spread. A 1200 1190 put spread. And check this one, it only has 24 days. Okay? And the other thing you need to know about these, these spreads transcend time. If you want to do it for a month, great. If you want to do it for six months, oh, okay, you know, we can talk about time. But don't think, okay, don't think that more time is going to cost you more because that is not right. This spread, you could trade Amazon, a $1,200 behemoth, for no more than $5 at risk. Now, five bucks, but you have to do one contract. This trade has a maximum risk 
of $500, okay? But think about Amazon. Could Amazon just keep trekking to the upside? Of course. All it has to do though is dip for a short amount of time. Remember that little probability graph, like here's Amazon right now at 1200, okay? Stock could get up here. Stock could get to 1300 in the next 24 days, but could also go easily down to 1100. And this spread doesn't exactly what? You're not hitting a home run, people. You know, you can risk 500 bucks to make 500 bucks. This is not about hitting home runs. This is about singles and doubles. This is about being consistent, okay? And, and again, pretty much any trading application you guys can think of, okay? Any trading application you could think of, you can do this stuff. And I know people are worried about options. They're like, my brokerage firm, they won't, they won't let me trade options. Don't worry, we got brokerage firms that will let you trade options. Now, here's a couple of live in-out trade examples. HYG, if you don't know what it is, what is HYG? It's junk, it is junk. These are live trades. If you've ever been on TD Ameritrade's applications, this is an actual trade, the exact time and date is stamped on here. This is a trade that I went out. I did a put spread. This is a bearish trade. How wide is it? It's a $2 wide spread. I paid a 98 cent debit. This is an actual trade. This is not paper trading. This thing is filled, okay? You can see the exact date. It's recent. I wanted to do a recent trade. I took it off on what? 11.9. I closed it. Now, I didn't make the full amount. I made what? I bought it for 98 cents. I got out of it for what? A dollar fifty. Is that decent? Yeah. Why? This product doesn't even move that much, but I like it. Okay. I like it. And I've traded this product a lot. And you can see this option. I took it off way before expiration. This option expires December. When? December 15th. It expires December 15th. I could have still had this thing on. I could have, but I did. Why? Because I had good profitability on it. That's what a recipe will do for you. Next, TLT. What's TLT? Bonds, okay? Notice something interesting. HYG is bonds. TLT is also bonds. Apparently, I like bonds. I like ETFs too. I like a lot of ETFs. So here's another one. And I kind of went back in time on this one too. And here, I put it on on October 10th. And I bought the spread, okay? For a dollar. I sold it for a dollar thirty-five. Now I'm not gonna hey, I'm not gonna hedge the truth over here. This is one that wasn't going well. I had to get the heck out. Why? Because November 10th was the expiration, and I had to exit it on November 2nd. And this is one we did with a lot of Theo Trade clientele. You know, this is a class that we went through and we're like, hey, you know, here this is this is a spread. Did I make money? Yes. Wasn't exactly hitting a home run though. Okay. Next, VIX. What's the VIX? That's the volatility index. You know, why not? Trade the VIX. There's two different spreads in here. And I just wanted to show you because these, they're a little older, but people always ask me about the VIX. So I was like, all right, throw a couple of VIX trades in here. Here's a VIX trade. First of all, it's a pretty strange product. In this spread, and again, this one was actually placed back in June, but I kept it for a long time. This is the same trade. I kept it from June all the way to August, right? I paid 44 cents for it. The cool thing about in-out spreads, time's on your side. You don't have to worry. So I took 44 cents and turned it into 88 cents. And you're like, oh, it's exactly a 100% return. I didn't maximize the width, but you know what? Again, hit singles, hit doubles. Now, the second trade in here I wanted to show you, this one, I lost money. I actually went out and paid 60 cents for it, got out of it for eight cents. You're not going to make money in every single trade, okay? But consistency is critical. Next, Intel. Intel, you know, extraordinarily recent trade. What did I do in Intel? I actually entered into, and again, this is a bearish Intel spread. Now, this one, the expiration date is December 1st, okay? I paid precisely a dollar. By the way, this is the actual fill time. This is based on mountain time. It's based on mountain time. I filled it over here. Uh, and I say it's based on mountain time because, well, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. We don't change our clock. So half the year in Pacific time, half the year we're in mountain time. I never know. Anyway, this one was actually put on, okay? Uh, on mountain time, a dollar debit. 
I exited the trade just about at, uh, 18 days later. It's the exact same spread, same expiration for $1.77 credit. And that's, it's Intel. Listen, you could trade Intel, you could trade Apple, you could trade Google, you could trade Amazon, you could trade the VIX, you could trade junk bonds, anything you want. You just, you have got to learn how to do these spreads and how to do them right. These are the characteristics of in-out spreads. So I'll tell you, the attributes of the high probability in-out spread, they're undeniable. Okay. You never have to buy the stock. You don't ever have to buy the stock. By the way, we're going to make sure that you don't have to go out and buy the stock. You could define your risk. Look at the spread below. This is the original Starbucks trade. It's a dollar debit. The risk is defined. Risk is limited precisely your comfort level. If you want to do one contract, listen, that's a hundred dollars at risk. You don't have to have a big account to do this. Okay. You don't have to have a big account to do this. And everybody then goes, what about commissions? Don't worry. We have that under control too. We can help you get good commissions. How can you do that? I'll talk about it here in just a moment. You're never going to use a stop order. You're never going to use a stop order. You can vary time frames and not pay more. You saw it in the VIX trade. Listen, I'll go right back to that VIX spread. Look, this VIX spread is way out in time. Okay, that's an August trade that I bought in June. That's an August trade that I bought in June and I paid what? A whopping 44 cents for it. Okay, it's not half bad. So you don't, you, you can go further out in time, not pay more. The probability of profit is high. This is the perfect spread to reduce risk of a stock portfolio. Think about right now, market, I can say this without hesitation. Markets are at all time high. Right now, you have more risk. If you're in this market with a 401k, an IRA, you own stock, you're taking more risk than any person has ever taken in the history of the markets. Why? because the market's at an all-time high right now. Reduce the risk. If you want to be bullish right now, cool, be bullish, but you don't have to hold stock. It's an excellent tool, though, for those seeking returns to build a smaller account. Maybe you don't have a stock portfolio. Maybe you got two grand in an account. Okay? Build returns. Hit singles and doubles over here. Use spreads to reduce risk. Building the in-out spread. Don't let options intimidate you. The spread below is being done for a dollar debit. However, this spread, this spread is, it's like a massive chainsaw. And one of the great analogies I always use is you're going to go out and you're going to cut down a tree. Okay. You can go out there, you can use a handsaw, but a handsaw, well, it's going to take you forever. It could be kind of dangerous, but we'd all have to agree. The easier way to do it is a massive chainsaw. The only problem with the chainsaw, if you don't know what you're going to do with the chainsaw, you're going to lop off a couple of fingers. The in out spread is the exact same thing used correctly could be the quickest, safest, fastest, easiest way to get where you want to go. In creating returns, that's where you want to go. Use incorrectly, you're going to cut off a couple of fingers. Understanding these spreads, okay, is everything. Fear not the in-out spread. Again, you may not know options or have limited experience in placing option trades, but we can show you how and when to place an in-out spread it's a matter of a few hours and you got to spend a few hours. I told you earlier in the presentation, this is not instant coffee, instant tea. What we do here at TheoTrade is we create detailed recipes for every strategy, including the in-out spread. You wouldn't bake a cake without a recipe. So why trade without one? I mean, that's what we started with. Everything's a recipe. Okay. And you know, everybody asked that question too. Why doesn't everybody do this? It's because here's what you need to know. What stocks do you do this on? right? How do you determine whether you're bullish or bearish? We didn't even talk about that. Okay. Yes, there is criteria for bullish or for bearish. What expiration do I select? You know, I did a 24 day, I did a 38 day, but you also saw one that had like 80 days because that was the VIX, right? What strikes do you use? Did you know I, you did a, what you saw me do a couple of $2 wide spreads. Okay. Right. You saw me use a $2 wide spread, but then in Amazon, you saw me use a $10 widespread position sizing. Well, I just showed you a bunch of one contract trades, but you got to know for the amount in the account, how many contracts do you do? What's the right probability for the trade? How do you execute the trade? That means send. How do you send it with any brokerage firms? When do I exit? What do you do with a losing position? Okay. If you can't answer these questions, well, then you're answering the question why everybody doesn't do this because not everybody understands the details behind it. And that's what we do here at TheoTrade. It's criteria. It's what we do. You know, we go through and we answer, well, trading. It's about answering the what ifs. What might be a good stock 
or ETF candidate for in and out spread. You could do this in the spiders. You could do it in the IWM. You could do it in the queues. What's a good stock? You know, why didn't I show you something in Apple? Is that is that not going to be a good one? What's the correct options expiration cycle to buy my spread in? Capital. Strike prices. The strike prices is critical. Again, the $2 wide, $5 wide. What strike options do I buy? What do I sell? We have the answer. We'll give you the answer to the probability. We'll give you the answer to how many option contracts. We'll give you the answer to when you close the spread. If the stock sells off big, what's the correct return for the strategy? By the way, if you don't know how much to make, when are you going to get out? When I make the most? Yeah, when is that? You have to have a specific strategy okay, for that. And with this, one key key point I want to make, you don't have to sit in front of the computer screen all day long. You can use good till canceled orders. These are what we know okay, about in-out spreads. They're what we call set and forget. Set and forget strategy. You put it on, you don't have to sit there and the entire time be like, oh, but still my heart. You can get out of it in an automated fashion. What if the stock rallies massively? Again, can I fix a losing trade? We have the answer to all the trade related questions, all of them. Like if the stock goes up, if the stock goes down, what about assignment? We build recipes with definitive criteria, checklists, okay? Literally our checklists, what do they do? Step one, step two, step three, step four. Each unique variable you encounter. If the stock goes up, if the stock goes down, what do I do when I'm in, okay? Then we get into the how, when, why, at what price. This is just the beginning though of the variables you're gonna face while buying in and out spread. The secret's in the sauce. You may be thinking, I can read about these spreads anywhere. Okay, think again. This isn't about the strategy. Anybody can learn what a spread is. You can go Google right now, you know, what a vertical spread is. But it's not going to tell you, all right, all the corresponding criteria. We put this thing together originally. It took months in fine-tuning it. We have years of time into the trade setup and the criteria. When you approach this, Follow the steps to build the trade. When you approach the criteria, you need to follow the steps. It's like a recipe, okay? Would you like the criteria to build an in-out spread? It's the high probability in-out spread course. I was the instructor when we did this course. The class is available immediately. And you have unlimited access to it, okay? It's theotrade.com forward slash in. The thing's only 97 bucks. The class slide deck that includes the entry and exit criteria and the checklist is available immediately for download, okay? Listen, we've done a lot of stuff here at Theotrade, a lot of stuff. This is, without unequivocation, the most important class that we have done. The class, okay, it's ready. It's ready, immediate, unlimited access to it. You start watching it tonight, finish it tomorrow, okay? Better to watch it all the way through. It's intense. It's almost four hours as an added bonus in the class we have options 101 the basics and beyond now a lot of you guys are oh, I've, heard, I've seen your options 101 fantastic okay you can look at the options 201 verticals and calendars and the third bonus in here is the volatility essentials these are multiple okay succession courses to get you primed and in the best condition to understand everything you need to understand prior to even going into the in-out spreads course. And we designed this, okay, and have it ready right now so that you can watch these things sequentially, okay, at your own leisure. Now, here's a little bit about the curriculum. Again, it's theotrade.com forward slash IN. You just go to theotrade.com forward slash IN. And I'll take you there in a minute. There we go. In the in-out spread curriculum, first of all, you're going to learn to construct in-out spreads. In-out spreads are used by a lot of professionals. It's about consistency. As I said, singles and doubles. Okay, How to buy long duration options without paying more. Everybody thinks like, well, you know, options, they cost more the more time you go out. That is absolutely okay, not true. In this course, we'll actually show you how to get longer duration positions but not have to pay more for time. How to use the fine risk, okay, reward strategies. See, so never have to lose sleep over positions again, okay? You can use these things in any market condition. Right now, we're totally bullish, right? But by tomorrow, we could be wildly volatile. You don't know. So, define your risk. I don't want to see people get crushed because one of these days, you're going to wake up, the market's going to be down 8 10%. 
You know, we're not going to get so lucky. Like, again, today, a missile fired. The market dives. Okay? Yeah, but it only dove for about 20 minutes before rallying right back up. People could lose, okay, 10, 15% of their life savings, and they don't have to because they just use spreads. We're actually going to show you how to build the in-out spread with detailed step-by-step -step entry and exit criteria. That's what the class is about, okay? We're also going to show you how to manage it with set and forget order types. That's the good till canceled. These things are easy to learn, okay? And they're easy to place. You're not going to have to, again, sit in front of the computer. You can do the in-out spread with as little as $2,000 in the account. And everybody always asks the question, okay? Can I do this in a retirement account? Of course you can, all right? You can do this in a retirement account, minimal options experience. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna bring up the site and then I'm gonna you know, answer a couple of questions in here. Again, the address, the address is theotrade.com forward slash in. I also want you to know we're here to support. You want to make a phone call to the office right now? 800-256-8876. Again, it's 800-256-8876. All you have to do is click here. We're also available to chat right now. You can come in here and start chatting with us immediately. Okay? So when I do this, I'll take you through it. A couple things. Number one, okay, Again, we went through almost everything. By the way, you just come into this website here, theotrade.com forward slash in, and this is all the curriculum. It's about three and a half hours, okay, from beginning to end, but all the bonus materials, and I'm telling you right now, the volatility essentials in bonus number three, that bonus alone, it's worth 97 bucks. Come on, the class, that is phenomenal. And I'll tell you right now, people haven't seen that one, okay? Because that's something we just threw in here and it's something I feel is imperative before going into these in-out spreads. Sure, you can watch the in-out spreads course, then come back to Volatility Essentials later. But this, okay, that's worth its weight in gold, the Volatility Essentials class. All you do is click Add to Cart in here. Now, I'm going to answer a few questions that come up pretty consistently, okay? One is about commissions. We have negotiated deals. We have negotiated deals with a number of brokerage firms. The primary brokerage firm we do deal with is TD Ameritrade. If you do not have a TD Ameritrade account, do not panic. You don't have to have TD Ameritrade, okay? We just have a great negotiated rate. It's something you can ask in the chat room. You can ask it in the chat room. I cannot mention live what that rate is, okay? That's in our marketing agreement with TD Ameritrade, okay? We do not get paid on commissions from TD Ameritrade. We have a marketing arrangement. If you already have an account open with TD Ameritrade, that is fine. I spent a large portion of my career there, a very good relationship. The next thing, you may not have options approval, but that is not an issue. We can get you options approval, okay? That's something we'll work on. And if you have problems, great, no problem. Okay, you have problems, it's not a problem. We got your back over there and I'll walk you through it. You can always email us. All right, moving along. Um, the class, of course, is recorded and you have access to it. And I'm answering the questions here, kind of one by one over here. By the way, yes, you can do this in paper trading. Yes, you can do this in paper trading. If you're not familiar, if you like TD Ameritrade and the Thinkorswim platform, we have tons of demos for you, okay? We have demos on there. But again, that's not the only brokerage firm in town. Like I let people know that we're at Theotrade, we're brokerage agnostic. I have a relationship with them, but we're broker agnostic here, okay? So the class is recorded and it's on demand. That means you can, right now, unlimited access to it, okay? And you'll always have access to the course. All right, next thing, Mitch. I can never get my head around options. This is a question. I just, I prefer to read the question and then go through. Uh, Mitch said, I can never get my head wrapped around options. Will I be able to follow along in the class? Of course. I mean, that's, hey, listen, the reason that we put these bonuses in here is not just as like, oh, okay, it's a good bonus, you know, and make you feel warm and fuzzy. I'll tell you what, people have learned a lot about options, okay? I'm telling you, you could be an expert in options. Go back through the options 101, 201, and 301. And why do I say that? Like, because... You know, we put a tremendous amount at 15 years of running the education division of what was at the time the largest options firm out there. 
We've got this stuff down to a science. I'm telling you, watch those courses. They're worth their weight in gold over there. Okay. So Mitch, yeah, absolutely. I think you'll be able to follow along. Okay. Susan, Susan was saying, lost money trading. And now I'm finding it hard to pull the trigger. Will this class help? By the way, if you guys have never heard the phrase pull the trigger, so Susan was saying, I've lost some money trading and I'm having trouble pulling the trigger. Pulling the trigger means executing the trade. Yeah, I think that you'll really appreciate knowing in this that start small, trade one contract. Who cares? You have $100 at risk. You need to get this down. You know, trading, it's an exercise. It's like going out to a driving range. Okay. Now, I don't know if anybody plays golf over there, but I live in like the golf mecca of the world since children. I don't play any golf anymore. That's just the way it goes. So three kids, no golf. But if you're going to go out and you want to get better at golf, what do you do? You got to hit a bucket of balls. You got to hit a couple of buckets of balls. So you want to be spectacular at it? You go out there, you hit a couple of buckets of balls. And that's what trading is too. You know, you got to be able to pull the trigger and pulling the trigger though, with only having a hundred dollars of risk here, a hundred dollars of risk here. Okay. You have to be efficient. You got to be precise. And that's what we try to do here. Okay. All right. Um, Richard, Richard said, I don't have much time to trade. I work full time that there's a ton of this course is designed with set and forget, set and forget, meaning that you could even plan the trade in the evening you can plan the trade in the evening then come back around and fire it off that night in the morning and then you can use good till canceled orders not a problem another uh, question came in i can't get approved for options because you're totally new we can get you approved for options okay oh i love this one from uh thomas i swing trade stocks how's this class going to help me well tom uh uh, well thomas i i don't want (laughs) to i don't want to confuse the, uh, the name over there, uh, Thomas, if you're swing trading stocks and you're putting up whatever it is, I don't care whether you swing trade a $20 stock, you swing trade a thousand dollar stock. Swing trading is insane. Why? Because you put up all the money for the shares. Why would you do that? If you could go out there and you could have like a bucket risk or two bucks at risk or something like an Amazon where you had $5 at risk. Of course, this class is going to help you. It's huge. Okay. All right. Michael, I had a six-figure retirement account and need to make income to pay the bills. Social Security doesn't cut it. Can I trade these strategies in a retirement account and help generate monthly income? I mean, Michael, that's the exact design of the class. And six-figure retirement account or not, the class is designed for consistency. I mean, that's what it's about. It's consistency in trading. That's the whole theme of tonight. Hit singles and doubles over there because you're exactly right. Social Security... First of all, it doesn't cut it. Number two, it's probably not going to be around by the time I retire. So yeah, I mean, this is designed to build up an account. Okay. But it's also designed at this point in time, I can't help but think like, listen, you're taking, you people are taking more risk than anybody has in the history of the market. Then I could say that with unequivocation. You got to mitigate that risk. Use spreads to do so. Okay. Um, Alyssa, Alyssa in here, if trading is such a good way to make money, why don't I hear more people talking about, okay, you know, losses and why don't they talk more about making money, okay? Is, do the people, are they making money trading? And the answer is, yeah. I mean, listen, the reason that people take hits in the marketplace and Alyssa, you know, normally like most people probably shy away from a question like this, but Alyssa, when people lose money in trading, it's because we'll go back to that exact example in the beginning of this presentation. They risk a buck to be able to make two. They risk a buck to be able to make two. And it's death by a thousand paper cuts. Okay. And that is so important to diverge away from that logic. Okay. At the, you know, you got to get back to the primary strategy and that is risk small, put yourself in a tactically viable position, a high probability position, learn to hit singles and doubles. Okay, when I say hit singles and doubles, you're not making a killing, okay? Small profit, small profit, small profit, right? And it's really important that we get just that down, okay? The small profit, small profit, small profit, because you can always add, Alyssa, you can always add contract size at a later time over there. So, I'm going to leave it at that because I know we've gone 
22 minutes over the time over here. I want to leave it at that. And I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. If you have questions, we will gladly. We've got Doc Severson. We've got Jeff. We've got myself. Everybody's answering questions in the chat room over here. Uh, again, theotrade.com forward slash in. And I'm telling you, you go through this class, you could email us after the class, support at theotrade.com. Support at theotrade.com. I'm telling you, you are not going to be disappointed in what we offer in this class. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this evening. Have a, have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.